All right, let's just get into it. Okay, we had uh, Canelo versus Billy Joe Saunders on the zone boxing. Okay. Man, that was an amazing night of fights. I loved watching the whole event. Uh, it took place in Arlington, Texas at Cowboy Stadium. I just thought it was fun seeing the whole fans back. And no, and I didn't want to see fans back with fucking masks on their face and kind of subdued and socially distanced. I didn't want to see all that shit. I just wanted to see, it's either like have fans there, but don't have fans there with like 25% capacity. Don't have them there with 50% capacity. Just go full hog. Got the vaccine out now. Just fucking put everyone in there. Like, that's that's my opinion. If you're going to have sports, just go all in or have nobody like we were used to seeing for a while. It was really weird, though, seeing the fans back and, uh, <laughs> you know, just seeing that many people in one place post pandemic. You know, you thought it would be like two years until we saw something like that happen. So I really enjoyed it, though. It was a great night of fights. Uh, co-main event was fucking fire. I think you had a guy, uh, Takayama, Japanese character against uh some mexican-american gentleman i forget his name did very well uh, takayama just turned into a zombie and decided not to go the fuck down so that's that's what you got out of that fight it's really a great fight to watch because you're thinking the whole time that takayama could go down any second and get tko'd or you know doctor stoppage whatever but he was really coming on he was really coming into his own uh just as the fight was getting called off it just, it just so happens that uh, he was taking way too much damage. I think the referee did a very good job ascertaining the situation and saying to himself, listen, I don't think Takayama's going to come back. However many combos he's firing back in return, however many counterattacks he's shooting off, it's not as if he's going to make a comeback. So let's just end it right here. Not only that, but Takayama does himself no favors by making this his fourth retirement now so he's retired three times before this bout and that's probably playing in the back of the referee's mind as well of like hey dude you already retired three times you're kind of one foot in one foot out already and i realize you want this to be your like last hurrah but you know you got a family you got shit to do get the fuck out of here canelo's coming out so then canelo came out mariachis people singing trumpets fucking everything modelo's flying in the air you're in Jerryland, uh, AT&T Stadium, big-ass TV, you know. Everyone in Texas <laughs> from Mexican-American descent just seemed like they got a free ticket. It was absolutely stacked, stacked with the Mexicanos. And watching that as a Mexican-American, it was really interesting seeing how that specific ethnicity, the Mexicans, um, culture, whatever you want to say. I don't want to get too into it. That specific culture has indelled itself so much in a boxing, the boxing world that it's inseparable from the boxing world. You can't have boxing without that Mexican fan base. The same as you can't have boxing without that UK fan base, uh, you know, the United States fan base. But there's something special about the Mexican fans. And when they show up in droves to support their guy, it's absolutely amazing. You saw Canelo after the fight singing their praises and really being lost for words in uh, the grand stand, the grand scheme of things, looking out at the stadium and seeing 70,000 people pretty much rooting for him and him only. I don't believe I saw one Great Britain flag over there. <laughs> uh, so in the actual fight, though, it was much closer than the end result uh, would have suggested. So you had uh, Canelo really filling out Billy Joe for the first one to three rounds, I would say. Very conservative, shelled up, would offer a counterattack or two if he really seemed necessary. The big difference, even in those early rounds, even in er rounds one to four, seemed to be that Canelo was the much better power puncher than that Billy Joe, even though he was able to catch him, wasn't going to offer him anything that was going to put Canelo on his ass. So there you go. And then uh, in the middle, in the middle of the rounds, so the round got stopped in the end of the eighth. But in the middle of the round, Billy Joe really came into his own and was putting on a great display of, uh, I would say, attacking boxing. He's really setting up that jab. Very strange angles he was getting himself in. His head was kind of ducked, and yeah, like I said, looping punches. 
Overall, though, I didn't think it was really troubling Canelo. I just think that when Canelo would let himself go, that's those are the instances when he would get caught. And Billy Joe being a southpaw and Canelo being an orthodox, it seemed like Canelo was very hesitant to let that right hand go, you know, the big overhand, because he was scared of getting caught by the left hook, left cross, whatever. And he was getting caught. Every time he would throw it, boom. Billy Joe did a great job of reacting. Boom. And then in the 7th and 8th rounds, Canelo really picked it up, really picked up the pace. But because by the time it got to the middle of the 8th round and beyond, it looked like Canelo was you know, ramping up the crowd, getting everyone on his side again, getting everyone hyped to see a finish. And it looked like he was going to get that finish. Like I said, he played a very conservative game plan throughout the whole flight, throughout the whole fight, excuse me. Kind of shelled up, really not offering too much, not showing too much too many of his weapons. And then when he smelled blood, man, he was just about to come after it. And that was the most exciting part to see. And I'm a little bit not disappointed by that stoppage, but I'm disappointed that it ended in such a way. I would have loved to see a finish. I think Billy Joe would have loved to see a finish, even if it was on him. You know, he would have loved to go out on his shield a little bit more, and I, you know, I feel for him too. But that boy was talking a lot of shit before. And if you're asking yourself, what shit was Billy Joe talking? It was just the disrespect. And, you know, fighters kind of got to be that way. Fighters kind of got to be abrasive. And in their mind, they got to have disrespect if they think they have any chance against a superstar like Canelo. But it wasn't just Canelo. I mean, Billy Joe just done some dumb shit in his life. And I'm glad uh, he got this little fucking broken orbital bone, whatever the fuck he got. You got fighters saying, oh, no, I never wish any injuries on anybody. Dude, Billy Joe's done some dumb shit, said some dumb shit. Like, I'd wish that on that motherfucker. And come back. God bless him. I hope he comes back even stronger. I just really wanted Canelo to fuck him up, to be honest. And uh, I'm saying that as a Mexican-American fan. <laughs> I'm saying that as someone that loves the the type of human being Canelo is. He seems like a very upright man, especially the things we've been hearing him say in these interviews coming out with Graham Bessinger. I've really enjoyed them because he's not putting on this fake persona like, you know, he's Mexico's literal golden boy. It's like he's in, he's adored by the fans. He's adored, he's adored by the people both in Mexico and the Mexican-Americans in America. But it's not as if he's under disillusionment from the government and how shady shit is over there. And I'm really, really fucking glad he spoke out about all that stuff about how shady the government is, you know, his brother being kidnapped the fucking Monday before fight night, Monday before uh, his fight against, uh, I forgot who it was, not wanting to join the Olympics because he felt like the government was going to end up taking his money and swindling him out of his own shit. I mean, that's just embarrassing stuff to hear about your own nation. And I'm so glad he spoke out about it. And that just shows you the kind of fucking man he is. And yeah, I... And very much looking forward to his upcoming fight against Caleb Plant. If that ever happens, I think he's going to dominate Caleb Plant. I don't think it's going to be especially close. I would love to see a great fight, though. Because if not, Canelo's going to get into this sort of space where he's probably going to get bored and then retire early. And we're not going to want to see that shit. This fool's a fi- this fool's a once-in-a-lifetime fighter. Once-in-a-generation fighter. And you could say, you know, Floyd beat the brakes off of him. And, you know, maybe he did. And maybe he would again. I don't know. <laughs> maybe Floyd's just that much better in terms of technical superiority. Still, though, you got to respect how far Canelo's come since that loss, how many people he's beaten since that loss, how hungry he is to cement his legacy in the boxing world, not just the Mexican, you know, Mexican fighter hemisphere with Julio Cesar Chavez and Oscar De La Hoya and so many other great Mexican champions. He is a consummate professional. He is the definition of a fucking champion, and that's why I respect him even more is because he's not waiting for these big name, big Hollywood fights. He's doesn't seem as if he's one of those guys obsessed with the glitz and glamour of being a champion. He just wants to beat the best of the best, and that's a very scary man. When you get to that sort of mentality in a fighter where they're not even getting challenged and they feel like they have nothing to lose confronting everybody and challenging everybody, that's a very dangerous uh, mindset for a fighter to be in, in a good way. I'm saying that that's he's he's he's... He's so special, man, and I wish him nothing but the best. And it was awesome to see boxing, you know, get revived at least for one night. I hope it does again with Tyson Fury and hopefully Anthony Joshua. And I hope Tyson Fury breaks the fucking brakes off of him. 
because <laughs> uh, I love me some boxing, man. There's nothing like a boxing main event. And even though I love my MMA, even though I fucking suck the teat of Dana White, sorry, Dana, it's still, it's got a long fucking way to go compared to the way a boxing main event looks. And I hope one day, the one day, hopefully soon, the UFC will go to Arlington, Texas, and they will have their own event, uh, with an actual suitable main event, you know, I, I heard Nick Diaz saying he wants to he wanted to fight Masvidal last year at Cowboy Stadium, and I'm like, eh, dude, I mean, you could probably fill the stadium, but that's not going to be the best show for MMA. MMA that's going to need like a like a Conor versus somebody else if Conor does well, and maybe have him fight for the title there. I would love to see that because it's. UFC is still kind of lacking that big night flavor like boxing can deliver on its biggest nights. Anyways, those are just my takes on it. And yeah, like I said, if you like the channel, follow, subscribe. I will post more sports content. I will maybe post more, you know, more moods podcasts where I talk about other more various uh, indiscriminate topics. But for right now, man, thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for all the love. Peace out.